Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading a Meteor Accessioner by me. So let's get into it. Meteor was typically not the person to overreact. And that was something he managed all of the time. Except when he told him these news. I can't be with you anymore. What? Who do you mean, Ryan? What do you mean you can't be with me? What did I even do? And in truth, he didn't do a thing. And perhaps that was part of the problem. He was too good for you. Too perfect. That you could not get yourself to accept this. Not when he knew you weren't worthy of being by his side. When he deserved someone much more beautiful. Much more smarter than you and kinder. And better in every way. And you could never be that for him. So why? Why have him all for yourself when you could never hope to deserve him? To be enough for him? It wasn't anything yet said. But he knew that someone like you could never be good enough for him. Because he was everything. He was kind, beautiful, strong and smart and patient and everything you've ever wanted. But were you even enough? Were you even good at anything or special at anything to be worthy of being by his side? The question plagued you day and night, and you knew the answer clearly in your head. The voice inside of you telling you to leave over and over until, until you had just decided it was your only way, your only option, the only way you could do something that was good for him. Mitra, there is no point in discussing what's already done. There is nothing that's been done, Wyan. You're talking about, about something in your own mind, but nothing's been done. I'm still here, and you haven't told me a good reason you should leave. I, I don't understand. Was it me? Did I mess up? That I do something. I need to understand, Wyan. You can't just leave me out of nowhere like that. I'm not leaving you out of nowhere. You find yourself snapping. The feelings in your mind and the voices getting a little bit too loud. A little bit too much. The self-hatred and loathing you had in your heart. Clawing at your lungs. Making you feel suffocated. I... I just need to end this. The two of us, we can't be a thing, Mitro. We're not meant to be. You're... You're you. And I'm not fit for you. We're not good together, and we'll never be. So get that through your head. You're someone amazing. You're someone... Someone I love. Okay? It's not your fault. It will never be your fault. So, don't feel guilty about that, at the very least. And though he reaches out to you and tries to say something, his words get caught up in his throat, confusion and sadness making him feel so, so helpless, like nothing you could possibly say in this moment will help him and will fix things. They were broken beyond repair. Something had broken. Something he didn't manage to see. Something that he may not be able to replace. Not anytime soon. And so you leave. Disappearing from his vision soon enough. And he's left alone. In what once used to be your shared space. Your home. It's a month later that you find a letter in front of your apartment. And it's written by him, telling you that he's meeting you soon. He's going to see you whether you like it or not. Because the least he deserves is some closure. A way to know what he did wrong. What went wrong in the first place. And why you left him. Why you did that to him. And why you decided to break his heart. You feel terrible, if you are to be honest. Extremely so. 
And the thing is, you have no idea what to do about it. The way your heart is aching for him. To spend just one more moment with him. To see him once more. But you knew the moment that you talked to him. There would be no going back. Your love for him was too strong. And now you realized that being with him was like living. But not really living. You felt empty. Like you were only surviving. No joy in your life. Not without him. Not anymore. But you met him. Because you couldn't do that to him. At the very least. We sure deserve to understand. And that's why. When he knocks on your door and you let him in. You don't expect to see him there with a bouquet and some chocolates. Um, Waitro, are you sure these should be for me? You ask him, confusion visible all over your face. But he nods, leaning in to press a soft kiss to your cheek. And you don't pull away, not really wanting to. I'm sorry, Wyan. I know you made a mistake. Shutting me out like this. But I'm still sorry. You've got nothing to be sorry for. Don't say that. You tell him. Meaning to stop him from spewing more apologies. Or some excuse for his apology. Which sounds absolutely ridiculous. But then he holds you gently. Putting the flowers and chocolates down. I know. I know I tried my best. But... It seems like it was missing something. I didn't read you. I didn't know what's going on with you. I couldn't tell that something was going wrong. Something was wrong. I couldn't help you when you needed it. And you couldn't have known. It's not your fault. Would you let me help you then? Mitro, I already told you. You don't deserve someone like me. You deserve someone better. I'm not meant for someone as perfect as you are. You saved her tears. Your heart breaking. At how much... How much she loved you and how much you didn't deserve all of his love. But then he cups your face in his hands. And he kisses you so sweetly and so gently. Then please, do this for me. I need you, Ayan. More than anything else in the world. And without you... I feel like I'm being punished. I feel like... Like life isn't worth living anymore. Not in the same way. Stay with me. I need you. I love you. Just as much as you claim to love me. And if you love me like you say you are... Then you at least let me try. And you felt yourself crying. Going into his arms. Perhaps you were not worthy of his love. Or at least didn't think so. But you had him. And he was more than willing to change your perspective on that. And many things more.